for the sound. I, I asked you. Okay. So I get close to you. <laughs> All right. Hi, hi, everybody, and welcome hi. to our newest episode. Again, again, I'm Roddy. I'm Landy. And today we have our special guest, uh, Natalie. And uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about your life here in Mexico, what brought her here, and uh, just kind of see where it goes. Uh, but first, of course, like we like to do, we like to introduce yourself, let us know a little bit about yourself. Sure. Hi, I'm Natalie Sainz, and I come from Denver, Colorado. I actually am a Mexican-American. I have family in Chihuahua and in Colorado. So when I first moved to Mexico, I was with family at first, and then now I have officially traveled to 13 out of the 32 states in the past year. Nice. And now, where do you call home? Here in Puerto Vallarta? I am in Puerto Vallarta for now, uh, for at least a few more months. Um, I actually wasn't planning on staying in Puerto Vallarta. Oh, okay. I was staying a month in Guadalajara, and the mm. Airbnb canceled the day before I had to oh. check in. Oh. <laughs> so I just found a place here, and I loved it, and I loved the people. Nice. So I stayed. Nice. I mean, I think we just have we've been having issues with Airbnbs ourselves. So I don't know. Was they just they just canceled because yeah, maintenance? <laughs> maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> Something happened supposedly. And they canceled the day before, so I had to. I stayed in Guadalajara on Chapultepec, which is oh, yeah. a really nice street, but it's expensive. And because oh, I have, oh, we know that street, the little bar street, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We the stayed right around the corner. Street. Oh yeah, I, lo I love it. But since I had my dog, I oh. can't stay just anywhere. So right. I do travel with my little Pitweiler. She's not that little, but with my <laughs> Pitweiler. Uh, so not every place will let her in. So I think I ended up spending like nine hundred dollars for the week. Oh, wow. wow. Dollars yeah, yeah. for the oh, week. So it was a lot. Yeah. So I came to Puerto Vallarta for somewhere cheaper mm -hmm. until I could kind of figure out my next steps. And now I've been here close to three months. Oh, oh wow. Oh, three months. Okay. Yeah. So I think a few more months and then looking at Oaxaca. Oh, nice. Oaxaca. Yeah. That's on our, yeah. on our itinerary too. <laughs> okay. and, and what did you do back in the States? So I was a director of business development for prosthetics company. So essentially I was at every single hospital. If anybody is watching me from any of the ortho clinics in Colorado, neurosurgeons or cardiovascular surgeons, hola, <laughs> uh, your girl's doing good. And then now I just run my own marketing company, uh, Viva Science Creatives. And I work primarily with corporations in the United States. Okay. And you, I'm sorry, you said marketing? Yes. And um, in all aspects like digital or just... So, um, did so really in all aspects. So digital, I also help create like trade shows. So if somebody's gonna go to a trade show and they really want to make an impression, oh, okay. they let me know and I will curate everything for for that. Um, I also do manage LinkedIn, Facebooks, Instagrams. Oh, wow. I work with uh, lawyers, cybersecurity, construction, uh, government contracting. So a little oh. bit of everything. Wow. Nice. I use it's AI based. So oh. for those thinking that you're like, how right. do you know a lot about all of these things? <laughs> I, I learn. <laughs> what AI learns, right? Help yeah, you. well, I learn from there. Yeah, so everything I do is AI based. Okay. Um, and then I just relay everything to my clients and they check everything out. And it's very accurate, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've yeah, wow. mean, been hearing more and more about that every day and, and just all the different aspects you can use AI in. So that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, what initially, I mean, I know you said you've been kind of back and forth your whole life, but you, was there a time recently that you kind of made the final decision and said, you know what, Mexico is the place to go? What led to that decision? So October of 2021, I just had a moment where I was just, I was driving home from work and my territory was very big. So I had been in the uh, uh, Colorado, in the Rocky Mountains, and I was driving home from, I believe I was in Eagle, Colorado, driving to Denver, which is normally about a two, two and a half hour drive. Okay. And it took me about six hours. And there was a car and it was spinning out. It spun out in front of me, this truck, and it was a red uh -huh. truck, a big like Nissan red truck. <laughs> And it was happening in slow motion, just spinning out in front of me. And I remember looking at my knuckles and they were white. And you can't step. I was like, if I even break a little bit, I'm next. Mm -hmm. Right. So I had to just pray and just holding my knuckles and just watching them like, oh, my God. I'm like, just please, please, please. And he did oh, wow. move out of the way. And I went through and I pulled over and I called my boss and I said, I don't want to do this anymore. Oh. I was like, I can't be scared for my life going home. I was working mm -hmm. very long hours. Yeah. Um, it just didn't seem feasible. I remember coming home and my house was dirty. Oh. Like, they're not like it was messy. It was dirty. dirty. Like, yeah. I was like, I haven't done Please. the floors mm -hmm. in a month. I was like, and then I would have a little time off. And of yeah. course, I just wanted to go out and right. do something. Right. And I was kayaking or spending time with my dog. And I couldn't afford someone to come over to oh, help it's clean. It's very expensive for anything. Yeah. yeah. And here, uh -huh. it's different, right? I'm yeah. like, I've had quite a few. Um, almost at every place I've been to, I usually find somebody 
and they come over in the mornings, they cook, yeah. they clean. Um, they're home by like 10 a.m. So they love it because <laughs> I give them like it's uh, like your standard salary here is about 1200 for a cleaner. Mm. A lot of people will use them the full 48 hours because here your work day is 48, okay. not 40. Although they're trying to change that to a four day work week. Okay. Um, but I usually just hire them from Monday through Friday and then they show up at like seven and they're gone by 10, how sometimes much, 12. How much you pay Pay them like a thousand two hundred pesos. Oh, yeah. thousand two hundred. So pesos. it's a and then uh -huh. for those of you in right. the U.S., that's a, about sixty seventy dollars, depending on where the dollar the is dollar at. Rate. Right, yeah. uh, <laughs> and that's per week. Right, per and week. and of course I bought my own groceries and everything. Mm -hmm. But then they would come. I'm getting ready while they're cleaning. Right, they give me breakfast while I'm eating. They clean up. Yeah. They some would leave me food awesome. sometimes. And then I have the rest of my day. Like I'm gonna work a yeah. few hours. I'm gonna do this or whatever. And it's prepped and cleaned. Yeah, and then if I make something for dinner, I would leave the dishes there. She cleans them in the morning. So nice, and it, yeah. so this lifestyle is very different now. Yeah, I have, you I, have your my own time day to do other things, not mm -hmm. to do with all the housework. Right. right. Yeah, the price is pretty reasonable. Right? Yeah, I think yeah. Was, we hired a cleaning lady for our house before. Yeah, but not that good a price. No, now, is that we, here in Puerto Vallarta or is out? Uh, I somebody in Pitial was where I was staying, which is a oh. neighborhood in Puerto Vallarta, okay. and that's how much she was charging me. But like I said, it is part time. It was sure. she was only going like three or four a max four hours a day. Yeah. Right. Um, but in Chihuahua, that's what I was paying, and also she was like full time, but which up from like nine to one or two. Yeah. So, but I do live alone, so it's not. Um, there's not really a lot to do. Yeah, necessarily. four hours is good. You yeah. also don't want a, but, another woman in your house for eight hours a day. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. Right, <laughs> uh, especially if you don't have anything for them to do. <laughs> yeah, you gotta sit uh, there. You're just like, Let's so what do you TV. do? I would do that. I'd be like, you want to have coffee with me? Just sit down. <laughs> and that was a part of that. Um, so typically here, if you do want to get a good price, you just have uh -huh. to say, hey, I'm, I have this much to spend. Uh -huh. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What can you That's do? Uh -huh. What well, can you work for me? This is what I this is what I need, and this is yeah. how much I have. Can you do it? Right. Yeah. Um, but if you go and you're like, how much do you charge me? You're always gonna get like higher, higher prices. prices. Yeah, but for this area, like a zona romantica here in Puerto Vallada, they must the nanny or housekeeper should charge a little bit more. Or probably try to. Mm -hmm. Right. As yeah. <laughs> At least try area. to. And you know, and I agree with that. There is because I get upcharged. People mm -hmm. um, seem even though I speak Spanish. Um, and I'm like, oh, I'm from Chihuahua, and I have the Chihuahua Wednesday accent, and um, they still will upcharge me uh -huh. because they see me and they're like, you look like a little too Americanized. So <laughs> they'll upcharge me, and a lot of times, like, I know what's happening, and I'm like, well, like, is an extra dollar really gonna hurt me? Is an extra five dollars yeah, right. gonna kill me? Right. And I'm like, for them, it's a big deal. They're going home like, we scammed her, we did this. But it's like a huge <laughs> deal for them. Sometimes right. that's what people make in a day. Um, True. And so if you are moving, you know, from the U.S. to Mexico, expect that people are going to, like, up your prices. It's not going to hurt you. It's still going to be way more discounted than it is in the U.S. Right. Yeah. And it really helps, you know, them personally. Yeah, I think we noticed that here even we were talking about that today in the market. Uh, we went we went by, you know, we bought, we like to cook at home and we bought chicken and pork a couple of times. And the prices just seem a little bit more. But the place we went to didn't have the price on the board. Right. And then there's two butchers across the street that we saw had prices on the board. And sure enough, like we're like, wait a minute, like we, we bought some of uh, the chamoto. And I think the guy uh -huh. charged us one fifty a kilo. Yeah. Maybe about. And then we went like we went by and, and on the, the board next door, it was like hundred pesos. Right. Yeah. But again, fifty pesos. Yeah. That's two fifty. Yeah. Know? So it's nothing like, oh my God, like he really yeah. he got me so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because uh, to us it's different, right? Especially if you're earning in dollars. Are you guys still working yeah. mm -hmm. okay oh uh, we're well, not working we, we we have our passive income from uh, rentals back home oh that's so wonderful yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be there soon <laughs> soon i'm actually looking to buy property here in mexico oh really yeah nice. we can yeah. talk about that yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean are you looking for like your own personal property or like uh, like rental like income properties right now i'm just looking for land because okay. uh so i'm 31 um and i come from more like more extreme poverty from when I was young. So Chihuahua, yeah. I'm on my own little timeline and I'm at the point now where I'm comfortable, where uh -huh. I'm looking to buy land. And like, even if I don't do anything with it, you know, down the line, it's going to be worth more with the way sure. that, you know, the world is moving and Mexico is positioned to be the 13th superpower, like economical mm -hmm. superpower in the world by 2024. Okay. Um, and if you look online, there's places like Chapa, San Luis Potosí, places like maybe Cut that out. <laughs> Where, you know, they're they're starting. Well, it's true. They're trying to get more 
tourism. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen? What happened to Puerto Vallarta 20 years ago when it was just a little fishing village? Yeah. 20 years ago, there was nothing here. Mm. Just a fishing village. And now look at what it is. Right. So there's a lot of places when you're seeing people wanting, starting to do marketing and trying to attract people there. These are places that are going to grow Especially when they look like That's Bali. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 I know, I know, right. Park your money there, like, yeah. waiting for the appreciation, mm-hmm. and you know it's coming. It's coming, yeah. yeah. And there's people that I know now, they're like, oh, we wow. bought this property for like 20000 and they just sold it for $6 million. <laughs> dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. And because they made a twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollar investment like twenty years ago, and twenty then, and thirty plus years the ago, property tax here is super so, low. Mm-hmm. Not like in the U.S., so you, you hold the land, mm-hmm. all the taxes. And I'm a citizen too, so <laughs> right, like yeah. there's that, so it's gonna yeah, be yeah. cheaper and, 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 you, and easier. You, you don't right. need to easier. put anything to the trust here in the bank mm-hmm. it's for you. Just it's just set, right? So Stop. yeah, that's kind of the next thing. Is I'm traveling and everywhere I'm going, I'm looking and I'm like, oh, yeah. this place is gonna be really touristy, and I'm talking to locals, and then as because I have the advantage of speaking Spanish, mm-hmm. I get to talk to them. Do you know anybody who's selling? Yeah. Right, right. That's oh, yeah, actually, so-and-so. So I have a, somebody I'm talking to in San Luis. I'm just waiting for him to divide his property. Yeah. Uh, okay. And he's going to sell me, like, uh, the biggest majority of it. Nice. Um, yeah. So. I mean, that's what we've heard from other people. They always say, if you can talk to the people, the locals and stuff, that you can always find out, you know, the friends, cousins, yeah. you know, niece is selling the, up the house. Sell. <laughs> My mom used to always say, preguntando se llega a Roma. So by asking, you can get to Rome. Like, if you don't know how to get there, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, take the steps you know, and then ask somebody, and they'll point you, and ask somebody, and they'll point you. And even if sometimes you go back a little bit, like, you're going to keep going in the long run. And <laughs> so That's cool. I mean, yeah, I think it, you know, real estate is always a good investment, you know, mm-hmm. for the most part. 99.9% of the time, it's going to go up. It's pretty safe. You can park your money, and you're going to do all right. You know, that's, that's that, obviously, that's how we feel. That's why we do what we do. Right. You know, and, you know we bought our house in Querétaro, you know, and... Uh, we didn't have to go through the process, but it's not as difficult inland as it is by the coast, mm-hmm. right? So that was a little bit um, easier for us, <laughs> but we enjoy it. Yeah, I'm looking inland too, but by rivers. So San mm-hmm. Luis Potosí, the Huasteca Potosina. Have you guys been there yet? Is that the like the little garden? The I know there's like a little garden. I would by not famous artist. call it a little garden. Well, I'm but... sorry. The garden that like the very famous sculpture artist like put a bunch of yeah, sculptures. that's close to that. Yeah, that's like near Shilit, <laughs> uh, Shilitla. I actually was there also. Okay. Um. Oh, that's that by the big cans. park we went with? No, no, no. It's, it's a little bit up in the mountains. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful there, though. <laughs> I cried when I was oh. getting towards that park. Mm. It's just so beautiful. I'm, like, in the middle of the rainforest, and I was like, I wish Miss Frizzle could see me now. <laughs> Who's Miss Frizzle? <laughs> oh, well, this is how you can tell the different generations here. <laughs> Miss Frizzle was a cartoon character that would take kids like in her bike she's a biology teacher and she takes kids on the magic school bus oh, the magic school bus. okay yeah okay <laughs> so this is uh some pictures from Azteca Potosina. i can send them to you if you want to post them up so people could see oh, and if you swipe beautiful. yeah that was that's the least pretty of the pictures yeah hey. oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah whoa it's wow. right oh, that's your little doggy little doggy yeah, yeah look at that. Wow. We'll, we'll try to post those up on there yeah <laughs> so it's beautiful beautiful um, I think that they're advertising as Mexico's Bali is kind of uh, what they're mm-hmm. trying to go for. Um, and and San Luis Potosí. That's La Huasteca Potosina in San Luis Potosí. Right, that's near that part. Right. Uh-huh. Right. So that's about, and that was about an hour, hour and a half away from the park you were talking about. Okay. That's the Edward Jones Park. Okay. Um, also very beautiful. And this is near a town called Ciudad Valles. Okay. So, and I'm looking like in that area. Because okay. they're looking to get more people, and they already have a couple of things going, but it's not big yet. Trying to get in like on the ground floor, trying to get in the, mm-hmm. the good so prices are still good. Yeah, that, <laughs> and hint, then hint, of course Chapas. You hear a lot. I haven't been there yet, but no. I keep hearing a lot about it. Same here. So I'm like Chapas is on the list, and it's on the list for some land as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, I hear again Chapas very affordable, but also very beautiful. I mean, yes. everything you, everything you see online is just yeah. like mountains and rivers and lakes, mm-hmm. and just. And you uh, hear a lot more about it online now versus right. like before it was. Just like, oh, like, oh, yeah, I know. Again, Chapas. Go back when I was talking about when we were younger, Chapas, way back when was where you always heard about the the, the, the Guerreros and all the, the warriors mm-hmm. and the, the fighting down there. That's what, that's what I remember when I was a child. That's right. when I first knew Chapas. But even then, I was like, where's Chiapas? Like, yeah, <laughs> Chapas is yeah. somewhere in Mexico. Yeah. I yeah. don't even know where it is. <laughs> and so you've, you've obviously been around Mexico, mm-hmm. you know. So let's maybe start with the obvious question. You know, I know you said you've been to 13 states. Yes. Mm-hmm. What have been maybe your favorite 
two states and maybe anywhere in particular in those states that you like. Oh, okay. Maybe, let's, we are talking about San Luis Potosí. Let's say two others. So I was going to say, so San Luis Potosí is definitely the top on the list. You have to go there if you haven't been. It's gorgeous. The people are very friendly. Um, I'll say this. I think the... Oh, the, hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I want to talk about food, and then I'm like, mm, oh, I'm really picky. <laughs> I've had some really good food in Guadalajara. Uh, oh. I really like Guadalajara. Everybody keeps telling me it's really like conservative vibe town, but I went and I didn't think so. I had a great time. I was on Chapultepec, and then I do have some friends there, so maybe that's why I felt differently. Uh, could be just like the area, but I really loved Guadalajara. Puerto Vallarta is actually one of my favorite places I've been to. Nice. Wow. Um, not your my typical Mexican experience. I actually kind of feel like I'm in the United States. <laughs> a little bit. I, I understand what it's, you're saying. <laughs> um, just like a tropical part of the U.S. Just because everybody speaks English. Like this interview is in English. Yeah. So there is that where I did kind of miss speaking English. I think that's why I wanted to stay. Um, I miss some of the culture, just like the open-mindedness. I really appreciate that people... Um, but you can walk out in shorts in this. I've worn this outfit in other places, yeah. and I have had people like just mean mugging and like just just really upset about like my uh-huh. clothes of choice or choice of clothing, even though I don't feel like I dress too out there. Right, right. But uh, in my question. hometown, <laughs> of, no, because of that, I'm this Chihuahua. If I go out with something like this, the ladies are having a heart attack. Ah, okay. So <laughs> they're like, oh, like she's wearing that and she's fat. <laughs> you can't do that. And they're like wearing leggings. Oh, you can't wear leggings. It gets everything is just like very oh, really? taboo. Gosh. So you do find that in a lot of parts of Mexico. Right, where, very um, traditional. Very parts. traditional. Uh-huh. So I really appreciate um, Puerto Vallarta just being oh, just yeah. more open. I think it is because of so many tourists. Sure, uh-huh. I think so. A lot of Canadians here. A lot of Canadians, especially November through April, (laughs) all Canadians. The little Canadian restaurant. (laughs) More than American? Yes, by a lot. Wow. By like a significant amount, a lot. We saw a little Canadian uh, comfort food restaurant, like right around the next block over. And it said, close for the season, which probably means they're coming in November. November, October, November. (laughs) That's probably when they open. That's That's probably why it was closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Puerto Vallarta, we've loved so far. It's our second time here, and we've We've enjoyed it. The first time was like a week. This time we're here a little bit longer. longer. Yeah. Oh, the people are really great here. I think the people are really friendly. Every um, It's really safe here, especially yeah. for women. I see women walking around alone at night. Yeah. So for somebody who wants to visit Mexico and has never been, Puerto Vallarta is a really good choice as like a first time. Um, it's beautiful. If you go a little bit more south, uh, there's turquoise beaches just like you would find in Quintana oh, yeah. Roo, um, or like Cancun um, or like Yucatan area. Um, and everybody speaks English, even the locals here. Almost everybody speaks English. I'd yeah. say Quite a good few, right? even yesterday 60, we went 70 percent. Yeah. It's a taco vendor. Mm-hmm. The owner like starts speak some English, not good, all, right? but a some. But yeah. you understand, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, and then the uh, the so. boy looked like, it, like he worked for the government, and yeah, yeah. Like two people, all three. Three people spoke to us eating at a taco stand. One only spoke Spanish, the other two spoke English. Mm-hmm. I met a boy at the bus stop and started to- to- talking English to me. <laughs> yeah, about so. the bus. <laughs> But, like, oh, okay. yeah. So I think it's good cool. for people who are either traveling or do maybe want to transition to living who maybe their Spanish is not that good. Mm-hmm. right? So it, yes. it helps make that transition a little bit easier. Yeah, and there's to- a huge expat community here. <laughs> yeah. um, if you guys, I don't know if you've already uh, met like some of the expat community mm-hmm. here yeah. or what you're into. i um really big on networking. So what yeah. I've been focusing on is kind of getting to know all of these expat communities. A lot of them are, you know, they're like snowbirds, so they're back in the sure. U.S. or Canada. Uh, but there is still a huge, huge community here of expats. Wow. Uh, maybe that's why I don't speak Spanish here. <laughs> I hang out with <laughs> expats. Yeah. What, what's, the, what's the age range <clears throat> from those expats? Everywhere. Expats Actually, you went? I am one of the younger the people younger on the group. end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, one of the younger in the group. In the group. Yeah. Okay. Like groups. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, primarily I'd say it's older people, mostly retired, or there's a few people that are remote workers. Mm. Um, so like me that still work, I have a few friends, um, that I've met here, but primarily I'd say it's people who are retired, um, or just like people in like forties to 70. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the general population throughout most of Mexico. I think people tend to be old who come from the U S and Canada tend to be older. You find a 
a couple of the mixed in youngers in their thirties, forties. And, yeah. uh, and then maybe people who are younger might just be more like the backpackers travelers Yeah, on average. <laughs> uh -huh. Unless you go to a place like a Playa de Carmen, there are more digital nomads there or Tulum. Sure. Yeah. But Playa de Carmen is known as Playa del Crimen too, oh. which is the beach of the crime. So be yeah. careful oh, yeah. right now going to Playa de Carmen. There's a lot of, um, like pickpocketing more things like that. So. Sure. So, uh, so you mentioned, I guess, kind of Jalisco, right? You said Guadalajara. Yeah, Jalisco and, and, in general, and I love. Puerto Vallarta as maybe your top spot. Maybe it would be a close oh, second. So I would say if you're going to go somewhere else, I would recommend, uh, well, Zacatecas is beautiful, but Grill, Chihuahua. So mm -hmm. Chihuahua in general, I have mixed, and my family is from there. So there are things that I love. So near my hometown, we have like Paquime, which is more ruins. Also, Mexico is full of ruins. Oh, yeah. You just don't know about them. But if you see a sign, they're like, oh, ruins here. You could stop and they're amazing. Um, so there's like the Paquime ruins where you can see where the indigenous people used to live. Not that long ago, I have uh, my aunt who's early 50s. Mm. Her grandpa used to live there. Oh, okay. And then they got pushed out into these caves, which is they're about an hour away. And it's called La Cueva de la Olla is where that is. Um, so you go into like a little private property to get through and you get to this like canyon basically at the bottom of the canyon is where you start. Oh. You can do hikes and there's a whole bunch of caves everywhere that you could just go in and explore. And you can see where people live. They had walls inside the caves, oh, wow. um, like separating rooms. And they're not super tall, maybe like here-ish. Um, <laughs> oh, is that because the well, people were small? Yeah, so I'd probably say like maybe like here. Yeah, so the people are small. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it was re that's shorts, really yeah. interesting. Uh, but Grill, you have este, Las Barrancas del Cobre, which, so it's like a canyon that's mm. very beautiful. And there's this beautiful restaurant that has... Um, like four to ceiling windows that you can see down. Um, okay. And there's also like the glass floor so you can see into the canyon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> you can, of course, do all your typical like ATV racers. Um, there is a lot, just a lot of like love in that little town. Yeah. Um, if anybody wants to go there, <laughs> I, if you're just a woman, I have a sweet little lady, Doña Caro, that you can stay with. And if you were um, just really anyone else. She just doesn't accept men unless they're married men with like the family. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but if you're like a single man, there's also a little hotel right across the street from there. Um, and La Casa del Nopal, and you can also stay there. And that's, a uh, was got acquainted with the owner of the hotel as well. Okay. So yeah, let us know, we get you a discount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, that's, that's cool because I know most people who we've met, talked to, they don't mention Chihuahua. Right? And I, right. I mean, yes. a lot of our viewers may not even know where Chihuahua is. I mean, that's kind of what central northern Mexico, mm -hmm. like so, northern central. Um, people you, know where El Paso is right. always. So if you cross the border from El Paso, that's Juarez. And Juarez is in Chihuahua. So it's that first state, essentially. So you have like Sonora, Chihuahua, and then you have um, uh, Tamaulipas. Is it? Oh, no, 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 Monterrey. No, Nuevo León. Nuevo León. Yeah. Tamaulipas. No, yeah, Nuevo León is the state. Right. So it's in between Sonora and Nuevo León. Yeah. I, I lived in El Paso for a year, so I, I, okay, so I, you're I, I know Chihuahua. So I, thought, I know Chihuahua. I have a feeling a lot of people may not know. Yeah. If you do go to Chihuahua and go to Nuevo Casas Grandes, please stop by and visit Tacos Piporro. There's a lot of different <laughs> little restaurants there. They are my brother's and my dad's tacos. Oh, They're nice. very delicious. Carnitas Michoacanas are also very good there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good place to go for food and beauty. If you need mm -hmm. beauty procedures. Oh, yeah. Um, any kind of beauty procedures, honestly, <laughs> dental, medical, that is a great spot to go. Very mm. affordable, really good doctors that go wow. in from Juarez and Chihuahua. Okay. And the prices are just astonishingly cheaper. I got my aunt her whole, like a whole set of her teeth, her top teeth, mm -hmm. and it was, I think, $800. Oh, wow. When in the US, we're talking, that's like a $15,000 oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, it was something like that. I don't remember the exact amount, but it was crazy. Yeah, we've had dental work here in her. her yeah, so we know. So dental work. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, you want some lip fillers? You need those like <laughs> microdermabrasions, like all yeah. of those. Uh, Chihuahua was a really good spot for that. Very affordable and, and good quality. And it's safe for women to travel yes. there alone? Or? Um, I've always traveled there alone. Uh -huh. um, there are services that will help you travel. Like if awesome. you go into Juarez or go into El Paso, there's like taxis, essentially like um, a group of taxis. So if anybody's interested and you reach out to them or comment, we can send you these people's informations and they pick you up wherever you are, take you straight to Casa Grandes to wherever you're going to be staying. And they do have like some Airbnbs and hotels there. Okay. Not the fanciest. So if you're <laughs> someone that's looking for something bougie, that's no. not your spot. <laughs> Wait, if you like adventure. 
that's your that's your, your go-to uh -huh. now, again i know because again just let people know i would guess maybe don't maybe summertime maybe not the best time to go i know it can get hot it, like uh, by, by waters and stuff like that in el paso i know it can so all of mexico will be hot in the summertime um chihuahua is a little bit more mountainous so it doesn't get as hot um sure i would avoid on. when is windy season like the winter actually you get a lot of wind mm. and i think i have some videos of my hair just like wrapping around my face just trying to take out the trash and i was like this what is happening <laughs> and um so i would try to look up on when, when it's windy and like avoid that <laughs> <laughs> sorry i don't have dates for you i believe it's kind of in the winter okay uh, but it doesn't get as hot there it is like deserty but it doesn't get as hot and the houses in chihuahua are interesting because the inside of the homes are always cold oh so like the materials that they use to make the houses in the summertime, sometimes you turn on the chimney. It's like you're dying of heat outside, but you go inside and it's cold. cold. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you have to, I've been July and had to turn on the chimney because we were all cold. And we're like, why don't we just open the door? Like go outside. <laughs> like, I'm like, no. actually, yeah, no, my thing is like, get some blankets and like we're <laughs> hanging out. Um, so it is a very good place to visit. I'd recommend it, especially if you like uh, good food, like they have really good quality. So a lady here at my carniceria, Cause I was like, how's your che cheese? If you go there, buy cheese, buy all the cheese. <laughs> or if you need some, let me know. Every time I go back to the United States, I take as much as I can and I sell it for 20 to $25 oh, yes. a, a bar. Um, because, what type of cheese? Uh, Menonita, Asadero, oh. Ranchero, you name it. Chihuahua is where you go for cheese. Puerto Vallarta, eh. Jalisco, <laughs> eh. Um, is it a, a goat cheese or cow? No, it's uh, cow cheese, cow but cheese. it's just... Better. Delicious. Mm. <laughs> it's delicious. It's better. It's really good. Um, and I'm going in July if I can bring you guys a piece. I'm gonna have to just break up a bar to share. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but quesos are really good there, and meats. You have oh a lot of God. influence from Sonora. Sonora is really known for their meat. Right. So like, I went to a carniceria here, and I was like, oh, I've been disappointed with the cheese. And then she's like, well, if you're from Chihuahua, she's like, of course you guys are cheese snobs. She's like, it's like if you were from Sonora and you were uh and you're of course not gonna like the meat here and i was like oh well my family is also from sonora i was like so i am also <laughs> so a snap <laughs> when it comes to the meat too <laughs> yeah but they have really good meats um and cheeses so if you go there if anything you just want to go and eat cheese and get beauty procedures and dental yeah, work awesome. done like that's the place to go <laughs> yeah thank you for introducing this place to yeah. most people probably they don't well, know they never heard about mm -hmm. it and also near juarez there's sand dunes so oh, if you're into wow. that, and then there's a lot of people who do tours on like the racers. So if you're into that, you can also comment on there and we can get you hooked up um, with Daisy, who <laughs> coordinates um, with Americans primarily and brings them out and gives them really cool full day adventures, provides lunch, does everything. Wow. You just show up. You just pay her and then show up and nice. she takes care of the rest. Everything. Oh, that's always fun. Mm -hmm. I know lots of women maybe watching our channel. They may think about the travel alone in Mexico, check some spots mm -hmm. as you were a woman. In the middle age, travel alone by yourself. You're going to certain states here. Is, is there anything during your trip you feel something? Oh, and I, you don't feel comfortable. You feel some mm -hmm. one maybe attack you or anything. Like we heard so, many, some stories about a woman and the kids got kidnapping here. Mm -hmm. Is that something you want to share? Some of your feelings? So or some I hear a lot about it. I have. Really only one time that I feel, uh, have I really truly felt unsafe during uh -huh. my trip. And I was in Quintana Roo in Majajual. Or uh, Majajual in Quintana Roo. That is really close to Lake Bacalar, which is Lake gorgeous. Bacala. And Majajual right. is also very, very beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I was with a friend and we had just done like a little three day weekend. Yeah. And we, it was maybe like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, which I'm normally not out at those yeah. times. I'm usually mm -hmm. inside by like 9, 9.30. Um, just, you know, safety, just right. in case. Mm -hmm. um, but that time it was a little bit later, but they had told us it's super safe here and we felt safe. And mm -hmm. we had walked just down to the end of the Malecon and we're walking back. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of guys who were, I was actually recording a TikTok. <laughs> and my friend, so I was like walking uh -huh. and you can see like in the video, those guys, and, um, which I haven't posted, but uh, <laughs> kind of walking behind us. And we ended up just stopping and letting them kind of pass us because they right. were hooded. Of course they had masks. Um, and we see Americans a little bit behind them and immediately I just like, like, Hey guys, like, how are you? Like, we're over here. And they were like, 
okay? And we yeah, let them yeah. pass us, and then uh-huh. we just walked with the group, and we just let them know, hey, we feel unsafe. Like, can we just walk with you a bit? Right, and then right, we right. stayed behind the other people because they would look back quite a bit. Right. Um, and once we got to, like, the American's destination, we essentially mm-hmm. just kind of hid for a minute and then walked around and went home, and we were fine. Um, but you do have to be careful and just really listen to your gut. Yeah. Um, if you feel like something's off, it probably is. Don't look for evidence. Just trust it. And it's better to hurt somebody's feelings than, you know, your family getting a phone call that you're missing. Right. Uh, but besides that, I felt pretty safe. I did have one run-in with the uh, cartels in Durango. Oh, okay. But in Chihuahua, you do hear about people kind of, like, working with them. And they're, uh, I mean, if you're not doing something you're not supposed to be doing, they don't care about you. Yeah. And they were very friendly. And um, actually I had on my Instagram <laughs> recorded one because I still get nervous. I mean, sure. I got nervous coming here. It's just kind of who I am before I do anything. I'm kind of like, oh, I get just a little nervous. Um, but I did have a video of that. And on uh, my TikTok was showing where I just went through and they were just like, hey, what's your name? Where are you going? Um, and then they radio over information and like, hey, she's it's so-and-so going wherever. And she drives like a Toyota, blah, blah, blah. So they just stopped da, da, da. on the road, on the highway or road? Yeah, so there's a little stop, like a, a reten is mm-hmm. what they call it. So usually it's police. And if you go on Google and look up that spot, you will see police there. Uh, but I have family that lives there, so I know it's not. Right. And then usually it's not. You'll just see like local people. Right. And they're really friendly. Um, like they just get paid. It's just a job for them mm-hmm. to just stop and just report who's coming in yeah, and out. Yeah. Like they're not doing anything else. Right. Uh-huh. Um, and since I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be doing, I'm just like, Oh, going to my aunt's house and coming yeah. back here. Mm-hmm. And I think in a week, no, it, I was there for three weeks, but I probably went through that like 12, 13 times or uh-huh. so. Um, it's just their job. Yeah. It's just sure. their job. They're just every what time uh-huh. I got to the part where they just stop <laughs> and I'd be like, Hey, da, 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 da. like, here's my info. And they're like, Oh, yeah. you've been here before. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. They're like, no. security case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they okay. just stop you. Um, but that's the only time I've had something like that happen. And you can tell it's not official by looking at their shoes. Yeah. <laughs> um, if they are dressed in military, but they have tennis shoes on, Mm-mm. that's not it. Uh, so some people were like, of course it's not cartel. Like da, da, da. But I was like, if it's military or at least they always have the uniforms right. on. Um, and then I did confirm with a military person here and I, somebody had commented that and I saw, you know, how they have the military just out and about patrolling, like my head out the window and I'm like, Hey, if you guys do this, I'm like, do you guys, like, how are you dressed? And do you dress like this, this and this? And got his, em- yeah. And he was just kind of like, uh, this no. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, will you do a dance for me? And he said, no, no, like, cool. <laughs> I was like, sorry. Well, yeah. See I'm not, I think I'm, a couple of good things you mentioned, you know, which is, advice that anybody should uh-huh. listen to was just staying out late doing things you're not supposed to do uh-huh. situational awareness yes yeah. right uh you know which again that's always good advice so i know we've talked about it in other podcasts and uh-huh. episodes that's just sound advice for everybody i think for those every- things, and not just in mexico everywhere yes yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely because yeah, exactly. mm-hmm. bad things can happen anywhere uh-huh. yeah right? and sometimes for women you always feel very safe if you have a company but actually that's the most dangerous time you feel comfortable. You have two. Me, maybe let your guard down. Two girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you are by yourself, you are more cautious. <laughs> yeah, here why. Mm-hmm. Um, a trick that I use is I have. Um, I had mentioned earlier Pantera, who's a pit bull Rottweiler, <laughs> and men see her and they will cross the street and let us walk, and then they Just will come back. Get a big back. fierce dog. So get a big dog that looks yeah. real scary. <laughs> she can fight. It's better. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you treat her good, she's gonna treat you good. Yeah, I think she's my dog. She have a big wire dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. At least, at least looking, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least mean looking. They give me a little sweetheart and lick you to death. Mm-hmm. As long as they look mean on the street, yeah. that's yeah. good. Hey, if they can catch on vibes. If my dog, if I bring her here and my dog is being weird with you and just kind of like not liking you, that's the last time you're gonna see me. <laughs> and like, true. She has better instincts than me, and I, you know, I trust her yeah, so. Yeah. I was reading another article the other day. So when a woman alone by herself, you go out at night or even in the evening in the quiet streets, mm-hmm. always leave the phone. Don't text anyone. Don't don't try to film anything mm-hmm. and just look straight. Don't check some like a letter yeah. or anything. But don't put your head down. And- yeah, and you always just walk straight, mm-hmm. confident. Yeah, be aware when you see some cars. The the back trunk is open. Mm-hmm. Stay away. You never <laughs> yes. know. They, uh, they really put a bag on your yeah. head, mm-hmm. push you there. You just never know. 
another thing who's gonna I'm trying to make this fun and friendly <laughs> another thing to watch out for yeah. in Mexico <laughs> is there's yeah. a scam sometimes in certain places or something that I had heard about um in that they told me about in Chihuahua that was happening in other places um I can't remember the exact places it said but just in case you know internet people get ideas is that they'll throw an egg at your windshield Mm. And then people you instinctively they're like wipe it and then yeah. it gets everywhere. So oh, then you have yeah. to stop your car and then they rob you when you stop. There's somebody else oh, waiting for you to do that. Yeah. So if anybody throws an egg at your windshield, you just keep going, don't mm -hmm. wipe it, and then once you're far away from there, pull Watch over. Uh-huh. Um things I've heard about that. Another thing that I use to stay safe is I have my family tracks me. Oh, oh that's yes. good. Uh, I have the app Life 360. Okay. Life and so they're always, they get notified every time I arrive <laughs> somewhere and every time I leave somewhere. Uh -huh. mm. um, so when I arrived here, my, my brother is my... Everybody knew. Uh, yeah, everybody in my family like gets yeah. a notification saying, hey, she arrived here, she left here. I personally turn those off because I don't care where you guys are at. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but those are really good too. If something happens, it shows like where you were driving, where you were at. Um, yeah, even places like Puerto Vallarta, we feel pretty safe here, yeah, especially the part, in yep. the central mm -hmm. area uh -huh. by the Malacón. But the other night, I have to share the, our experience shortly. We were walking Louis down on the way back. Then there's a cop on their on their the, what's called the patrol van. They just stopped. Oh yeah, and they not just a stop. They block the road, uh -huh. and all of a sudden, they just ride right passing us. Everyone walking with quickly. a gun and walk like a small jogging. Like something going on by the Malacón, they're uh -huh. running there. For us, we just feel like let's walk the opposite. Yeah, let's uh, go now. Yeah. <laughs> like, stay away from. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Maybe something, maybe nothing. Yeah, maybe I don't want to stay to find out. Like this is all at right. least the five six soldiers with guns. Like yeah, walking really fast. Yeah, it was uh, the National Guard. It was the state police and local. It was like a whole mm -hmm. all of them together. There's been yeah. a lot of protests going on right now, and the military essentially surrounds them. Mm. and tries to like not really let people mm. see uh, like okay. what's going on so it's like i think it might be political protest and it could have been because yeah. i've seen quite a few um but at nighttime i haven't seen that night, so it's pretty late thing. like a 9 20. Yeah, oh, probably 10. not that then yeah. then we, we we're passing by our tamale guy at the corner i said yeah rod can you go to just ask him what's going on and yeah. he's local here said yeah. tamale for 30 years he knows right and then rod asked this gentleman and he said oh yeah don't worry about it then yeah. we just try to Try to find those people selling drugs, drugs on the street. Like That's why they up. walk fast. Uh -huh. They try to catch them by surprise. Right. right. So they, don't they walk worry. Like uh -huh. They just whoop, whoop, and they try yeah. to go and see what they can see. Which is funny because a lot of times, like they know what's happening, like on the beaches, right. and they're the ones that are like, eh, like this. Yeah. But if the boss is like, "Hey, right. do this," they're, they're gonna. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, like I said, so. you know, it was us too, and, and Louis. Like we're having ice cream. As soon as you see a bunch of. Go we're used to the soldiers, and that's fine. But when you see yeah. them, it was, they, weren't, they weren't just walking. Like they were on a were, mission. And I was like, "Yeah, let's not <laughs> find out see what's going on. Let's leave. Like, let's yeah, go yeah. Now. That's uh, a safe thing to do. It's how I always say. I'm like, my job is to stay alive. Right. They're like, oh, like look at that, you know, sweet old lady or that guy or this. Like, you can give them a ride. I'm like, I don't give anybody rides unless <laughs> I know you personally. personally. If I yeah. see you, you know, on the street and you're walking, and I'm going, I'm like, oh, hey, like. You know, come on in. But if I don't know you, which is ninety nine point nine percent of the time, <laughs> oh, the people on the wrist, um, <laughs> right? I'm like, I don't know you. I can't help you. Well, what if they have kids? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, that might be just like cover right. somebody. Well, it happens, right? There was also on my drive. Um, so last year, I was going to start this trip throughout mm -hmm. Mexico, and I was stopped because there, my brothers were told by the commander of of Chihuahua that they were going to start like a bigger like narco operation or something. Uh, and then a week, then he had told me and I was like, okay, cool. Like, and a week later they killed him before oh. the operation started, wow. which of course it was because of that. Um, so I didn't do it. And then something that he had been mentioning. Um, and then after that, I was like, don't have so many friends that are in these things. Like, and I know he was supposed <laughs> to like on the good side or whatever, but yeah. like, you don't know, you have them at your house and they want to get them there. Like, you never know. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, just be really careful with like who your friends are and who you're hanging out with. That's the biggest influence. But they had said that there's like certain places like uh, down by San Cristobal de las Casas. Mm, yeah, so Chiapas, south right. in Chiapas. We're leaving there that sometimes you'll see kids on the street and they'll pull you over. Um, and usually they'll ask you for money. Like they won't let you through unless you give them money. Mm. Um, or I've seen people that will give them candy. Right. But then that there's also supposed. Yeah, it is just kind of if you are driving through Mexico. 
you don't stop for anyone that's not an official. If there is a within or something, even if they are wearing tennis shoes and you don't think that they're, you know, official, just if you're not doing something you're not supposed to be, you're fine. And yeah. of course, accidents can happen anywhere. But right. sure. just being cautious of like, if you don't know them, don't help them. Um, which sounds like a little bit sad, but just in general, especially as a woman traveling alone, mm-hmm. that um, if men are asking you for help, do not help them. <laughs> yeah. And usually we'll ask other men. So if they're asking you, uh, be a little concerned. Yeah. You know, true, just like those true. standard yeah, safety yeah. things. And then... Another question, I know it's a little bit personal. Oh, yeah, no, go if, ahead. If we could ask you, I know you're here, you're being single. Mm-hmm. So do you uh, ever start any dating life? or? Um, <laughs> I've done some dating, so I am single. Um, I have a very specific thing that I'm looking for in a <laughs> husband, right? Oh, right? Wow. Mm-hmm. So I'm not casually dating. That's not really yeah, my style. Sure. Um, I have a lot of projects going on. <laughs> they're all married if they're you're on a dating married. app they're, all married. they're <laughs> mostly all married and that is not a mexico thing that is just in general the wow. last time i tried dating apps in colorado wow. seven out of the t- 10 men that i talked to if i was like okay i'm gonna talk to these 10 guys kind of uh-huh. get to know them wow. and see what they're wow. about and you know people my age like we're really tech savvy we know how to reverse look up pictures and stuff and you pull up their facebook and their name's a little different or something, and there's the way. Uh, oh, wow. Well, but and, even you ask them, you single, married, they just lie. Yeah, so, I whatever. would recommend saying, instead of asking, are you single? I would uh-huh. recommend ask, phrasing the question, okay. is there anybody that thinks they're in a relationship with you? <laughs> because men are very literal, and they'll say, well, like, I am single, but, oh, like, yeah. she's not, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh-huh. if in their mind they're single because they're like, I'm not married, so right. I'm single or like this, so you have to really be careful of, like, yeah. how you phrase things. Like, is there anybody that thinks they're in a relationship with you? <laughs> um, I think I find that most men, not all, but, like, will, for the majority of the time, be honest, but right. you have to be very intentional with the way you ask things. Way to they it. will find <laughs> loopholes for everything, and in Mexico, that's no exception. Would that be uh, any danger hidden there? Like, you know, uh, meet some I mean, people, they drug you, or those things. I, uh, I mean, I luckily have never been in that situation. I think that that is, in general, like awareness, uh, like meet for everything. Public. So, yeah, I would say meet in public. Yeah. Here, they are really big about like picking you up at home and taking you somewhere. Um, that's again where we would go tracking devices. Yeah. Uh, so like my for me, right? Where I've so like I don't go out a ton. I do network and stuff, but sure. like where I've been more asked out is like at home, right? Where I'm gonna be staying, so they know where I live. That gave it felt a little more safe because it was like an American app, but also Airbnb is not. <laughs> they're not really responsive with that, that stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would say like of course always tell a friend if you don't want your family knowing where you're at, who you're going with. Um, take a picture of like their license plate, send it to a friend, their picture. I've gone as far as saying, let me take a picture of your ID <laughs> uh, or send me a picture of your ID and then sending that to somebody. Um, I, if I like in the past where I felt maybe like I'm on a date and then somewhere at the day I start feeling uncomfortable, of course, having like a backup plan of like, Hey, come pick me up or mm-hmm. just saying like, Oh, yeah. so-and-so is like expecting me. And if I'm up there right. by this time, they're like, Don't something. Worry. Yeah. right. Or no, I would say more of like, they're getting my brothers and they come find me. <laughs> like they track me. And then for me, right. it's true. Like I'll be on there yeah. and I'm just like, Oh, like my brother's here. Like I can, you know, we have access to each other's locations 24 seven. Right. Um, so definitely having that and verbalizing it. Uh, so my first dates and stuff or when I first meet men and I'm like, Oh, well like maybe it's always something like, Oh yeah. Like my brothers are really protective and like, they're always tracking me. Like they're, um, if I don't call them Mm -hmm. like every night by a certain time, like they freak out and they get upset with me. Now they're like, okay, well like if I, this is going to this. And if that time comes by and I'm still there and I'm having fun, I'm like, Hey, let me go check in with my brother. Even if I don't. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Hey, let me go check in with my brother really quick. Right. 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 And then I'm like, Hey, because I said this and like, Stick with your, if you're going to lie, stick with your lie. Um, <laughs> yeah. But just to give them a little more like, oh, this isn't the one. A lot of times people, when they're looking for victims, they're looking for a specific person. Sure. Someone who they know is alone. Um, someone that they think maybe doesn't have a lot of friends. Someone who's mm-hmm. not going to speak up. So yeah. don't be afraid, um, you know, to, to speak up and to say things. And I always tell people like, I'm a chismosa. If you tell me something, I'm going to like talk about Everybody. it. Like, don't tell- <laughs> I'm a chismosa. 
Um, and then if I accidentally slip something, it's like, well, I warned you. But also, <laughs> um, at that point, people kind of think about it. If they're going to do something negative to you and they're like, oh, well, she's active on socials or she's this, like, mm-hmm. well, I don't want to. Right, right. Fuck with it. And I think no. another thing for women is when you meet just even you are in the public, in the cafe or in mm-hmm. the bar, never leave your drink when you mm-hmm. go to the bathroom. Oh, that thing. oh so it's pretty worldwide, right. I think. There is also yeah. nail polishes. I do not own some, but I want to get some for my nieces where oh. you put on a polish on whatever nail and uh-huh. you can just go like this oh. and it'll change color if there's that's something awesome. in it. I've heard smart, about you have to be idea. so careful because yeah. you think don't leave your drink unattended. I've right. seen videos of women having their drink here. Right. No, it's good. Yeah. Da, 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 da. You're true. Right. Yeah. Quick. Oh. Quick. So uh, you have to, it's not even that sometimes. Where there are like covers for, those products. Um, online on Amazon. Oh, really? And I think it's wow. just called like, like date rape nail polish or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I would Google to find. Sure. Yeah. It. And yeah. it'll probably pop up. Yeah. yeah. So I'm wow. like, it's something like that. Um, awesome. So yeah, I'm like stuff like that you yeah. can keep. Also for me at home, I have these like locks. They're red. It does not look like a lock. It's like a red thing with a chain on it. Uh-huh. And I put this, the metal part that attached to the chain in my fr- door frame where the door closes and like the little latch goes in. Okay. Um, you put this metal thing in and then you close the door and then you put the red thing on and it like locks it. So even if they have a key to your place, so for me, or I'm getting, I'm, you know, meeting a lot of people that I don't know. And mm-hmm. I'm being asked out. So I know that there's men that have some kind of interest. Yeah. And you don't always know what kind of, I just know that there's interest, but I don't sure. know intentions. Right. And I put that on my door. And even if they have a key to the place, they cannot open the door. That's so nice. things like yeah. that. Um, or if you have like some kind of, like, there's also like sticks you can put on your door. It's say mm-hmm. you have stuff like that. Uh, carry if you can, whether it's like bear spray, uh, pepper spray is like illegal in a lot of places. Places oh, yeah, or not illegal, is. but like if yeah. you use it, it's illegal. Uh-huh. So you can carry wow. it but not use it because yeah. uh, it's considered a weapon. But if you have like wasps for your bear spray, like that's not a weapon. <laughs> <Some> <laughs> yeah. So um, think about like that kind of stuff. Of course, always just be aware. And if you're feeling unsafe, that's what's really important to have um, friends. I sometimes even will said like a friend that lives in the US and I'm like, hey, I'm going to be going out with so and so and so and so, or I'll check into the restaurant. Hey, I'm here like on a date. Here's what he looks like. Da-da-da. If something, and at that point, it's more of like, if something happens, here's who did it. Or True. here's like your first True. lead. Right. Um, and sadly, that's just kind of like risks yeah. you have to take as going out as yeah. single women. Yeah. That's good. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. I know it's good. I know a lot of, it's always good to talk about that because I know there's those interest people come to Mexico, they talk about dating, but I guess maybe kind of switching gears um, and kind of winding down. I know when you had sent me a little bit about yourself, you had mentioned some things that you were, Kind of get involved with. Uh, I know they said with like one was uh, like an orphanage, another one was some kind of like dining group or something. Yeah. I don't know if you want. I know so, what people they, they would come to Mexico. They want to have things to do with interest. And yeah. So you know, what are these um, interests? <laughs> so right now I'm volunteering at an orphanage in Fitial, Jalisco, which is about 30 minutes from um, where we're at right now. And I didn't know when I started that it's actually a private orphanage. I would have liked to have worked more with a public one. Okay. So I've learned that in Mexico, um, if you want to avoid some taxes, you can have like orphanages. And oh, it's like, like, it's a, like, like a foundation. Right? Yeah, it's, it's like a foundation, idea. right? Um, but I do, I get to go with the kids. And I, it's not like I'm doing a lot of educational things. Honestly, uh, I just go to have fun. I just grab them and like helicopter them around <laughs> and flip them and um just tire myself out essentially it's like go go to work out i go every friday and i have done a couple of things where like my followers have sent me and like people i know from back home money to buy them shoes um to buy them like different little things and just activities for us to do together um so if anybody would like to support us with that that'd be great and then the other things that i'm doing and this isn't uh, my projects but i did meet two women here um anna sechat and she does like um high dinners so she infuses oh. food with like CBD and marijuana oh, and okay. you get, so, and this is all Americans that, of course, that of get course. together <laughs> uh, for the most part, it's all Americans. And like last month she had done a pool party. So she rented a really nice Airbnb with a rooftop pool oh, wow. and they get together. Um, and then it, that was like a buffet of mm-hmm. just different infused foods. Um, okay. And then this next month on the 25th, she's doing an event on a yacht. Ah, or, nice. Oh, no, I think she switched it from a yacht to like a smaller boat, but like a boat. And oh. it's like 
blends in a brunch or something. Sure. And I don't normally talk about that stuff on social media, but I don't work professionally for anybody anymore. So I'm sorry, people. <laughs> and, <laughs> Wait, and we told me infused food. I was thinking like maybe like infused with like spices. Is that I don't know. Is that type of infused? No, oh, it's wow. infused. Yeah, it's that kind of infused. And then there's another lady. Um, and I don't know how I got involved in these communities. Like things just happened. Um, and but they're like really sweet and everybody's really yeah. friendly and supportive. So if you're trying to like get connections networking, it's a really good areas. To do that, and then there's like in the African. And then suddenly in the 90s, it was like got milk, and there was all about milk advertising. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, and then suddenly it was like, oh, milk is good for you. All these, so what happens is the people that sold milk were like, we're not having a lot of sales. You come together with all your competitors mm -hmm. and you create, you do a marketing thing, and then that's like your campaign. And now milk is important and everybody drinks milk every day. And now we're always like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> same thing. You know, they hired a whole bunch of people. They did yeah. every how for like a year and a half. I had so many friends and people saying like, oh, yeah, I got hired. I like don't really do anything. I have to keep asking for work uh -huh. uh, and all these tech companies. And then suddenly they like all got laid off at the same time. Wow. And so now what do you have? You have a whole bunch of people with one skill that need jobs. And now there's less jobs than people versus before there was more sure. people than jobs or, you know, back more jobs than people. Right. So is that easy for freelance people to find the jobs? Uh -huh. Or find work? Yeah, find yes. those work, like enough income to support their life. Uh, how do I ask? Should, should, they, um, should they prepare those income already stable for a couple of months, even they live in the U.S. first, then move? Not just come yes. to the to Mexico first. Then Don't like, oh, the job is coming to me. I can expect to make another three k, five k a month. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't work, then yeah. I have to go Don't home. do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, don't do what I did. I uh -huh. quit my job and I was just kind of, but I went with family and essentially right. little, like my brother, net. yeah, was like, net, was so. in charge of that, <laughs> but making sure I ate and like you said, they have lots of restaurants there. So <laughs> yeah, I was just like different day, different place. <laughs> yeah. Um, Definitely, if you can get your things together in the U.S., especially if you are going to freelance or kind of create a company of your own, which creating an LLC is very inexpensive and oh, yeah. easy. Um, so if you can do that, I would keep everything separate. But if not, you can work your Social Security and have clients and just have them, you know, pay you to your regular bank account. We'll make your accountants a little bit upset with you, but not too bad. Um and try to have clients ahead of time or just start freelancing, whether you're using Fiverr or Upwork, um, just even like Facebook, you can, uh, LinkedIn is huge if you're not on LinkedIn and you're trying to get jobs that you need to be on there because recruiters will find you and find ways to make your profile um, like enticing for them to look at, right? Uh, but that's a whole different TED talk. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. um, but definitely try to have something ahead of time. Cost of living here is relatively cheap, mm -hmm. it's like a lot cheaper, especially if you speak Spanish um, or if you're like a Mexican American and you're coming here and you know your Spanish is pretty good. Uh, you're going to be able to talk to locals and yeah. you're going to get way better deals. I pay like a third of one of my. She thought she was getting a really good deal. <laughs> I won't go into the numbers, but um, and I have, uh, I'm staying at a ranch now, a seven acre ranch, which wow. if, when I have an event, I'll go ahead and invite you guys. Nice. Oh, I yeah. did on my list. I had, there is a huge place. I could have uh -huh. like a whole dance party there essentially. Oh, yeah, seven acres. It's a wow, kiosk. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like a pizza oven, like the clay <laughs> pizza oven. I got grills. I have really nice like tables, like those wood tables. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the house is a four bedroom house. Uh, one bathroom, but four bedrooms. It's massive. You got seven. And acres. then there's, uh, I'm sorry. You got seven acres for the restroom, right? <laughs> oh, and then the re I have outside at the bottom where like the little kiosk is, which is just like a tin thing. Yeah. Um, there's like a male and a female bathroom too, and there's a playground if you got kids. I <laughs> wow. so I'm like I don't have kids, but there's like swing, seesaw, those tire things that kids jump on and play around yeah. in, like. And then there's a soccer field, the volleyball net, wow. uh, uh, like helpers quarters. If I were to have help, I guess helpers. I don't like. <laughs> we need that much help. Yeah, I was like so. There's that, and then they do all of the maintenance. I don't oh, wow. do anything. There's a horse on the property, and a, a parrot, a macaw. Oh, okay. Yeah, like and in a pretty wow. big cage. Yeah, yeah. And 
like I pay a third of what she, my friend pays. Oh, nice. <laughs> but why is that? Because I speak Spanish and mm-hmm. I'm able to, you know, just kind of yeah. tell people like, Hey, here's my situation. Here's what I have. Do you know of a place that can accommodate right. this? Right. Um, What's the average cost of living for a single person? If you know, oh, well, it really depends on how much you're going to be paying rent, where you're at. Like, sure. Sona Romantica, you're going to expect to pay more, but I have mm-hmm. seen apartments in this area for like 13, starting at like 13,000, mm-hmm. not as often. Um, yeah. But if you're going, I get in my car and I'm like, hey, do you know anybody renting around here? And it'll be like, oh, check with whoever. And then I'll go, hey, they said that maybe you knew, do you know any? And right. that's how I find places. Going. Yeah, I just ask, ask, ask. Yeah, and I get here, to, especially in this area, yeah. it's very high. Um, oh, yeah. But I've seen it go up to, and I don't know how much you guys pay, but um, the lowest I've seen is 13, and it was a three bedroom apartment, hmm. one bathroom, no kids or pets, though. So, uh, so mm-hmm. it didn't work for me because I was like, I'll take it. And they're yeah, like, no, no dogs. I'm like, oh. Um, and then I've seen it go up to like 40,000, 50,000. Uh, so, 40,000. A month. Right, yeah, pesos. Pesos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pesos. So. Yeah, <laughs> pesos. So it's That's about true. up to like two thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. So just depending, you know, on who you're going through. If you're going through a real estate company, they're going to charge you more because uh, they're also covering like their salaries plus the profit that people want to make. Um, Maybe go to like Facebook so, Marketplace. Yes, you can, you can find some more local price deals. Mm-hmm, but uh-huh. they're still going to hijack those. Uh-huh. In Puerto Vallarta, if you want to move here, it's ideal to move here in like May june and then get a year lease um if you try to move here in october november you will not find a place everything will be three to five times as expensive sure. because you have um all of your expats that are coming here from canada yeah and they never give anyone deposits oh, yeah, they, <laughs> and you'll find online. anything online yeah we've heard a few stories about yeah. that people give deposits ahead of time for whatever, you have to meet people reason. and don't give a deposit yeah. until you're signing the contract yeah. right oh yeah they may just and, disappear yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sure so yeah, we've heard lots of stories like that yeah you have but, to just but that's common knowledge like it, if you so. wouldn't do it in the u.s don't do it here <laughs> you like to believe so right but, yeah. but it happens <laughs> and i mean so, it is different the average cost of living maybe a person two thousand i say yeah that i two, three, spend thousand. about two thousand ish yeah. i am more of a big spender i'd say sure. so yeah. i'm someone that i'm like oh i want to go get like wax and i'm trying to do my nails and i'm trying to do this and i want to do this yeah. and i want to i like to go so, eat so out a lot still. Uh, still so but it's bad. really inexpensive yeah. the drinks here and, are pretty reasonable mm-hmm. you always see those happy hour two for <laughs> two one everywhere one <laughs> yeah um so yeah i'd say like two thousand dollars a month you're gonna live comfortably um especially if you can get rent for less like i the numbers i was giving you i'm, I'm paying less than that. <laughs> uh, like i said that's more if you have the connections um, eating out is super inexpensive. Grocery shopping is so inexpensive. Um, the first week, if you move here, you're going to be sick. Maybe even after <laughs> two weeks. It's yeah, not sure. Montezuma's revenge. It's your body detoxing yes. all of like the chemicals that are in your food in the U S and I had my friend that had just come here that I was uh-huh. telling you, he thought I was kidding when I said that I said, you're going to lose weight and bring a speedo. And he didn't think I was, <laughs> he thought I was lying with both. And he gets here and he was really sick for like, I don't know, eight, nine days. Wow. And just, he was just like thrown up and just, you know, GI problems everywhere. Um, but then after that, he's already lost 10 pounds and he's only been here three weeks. <laughs> wow. And that's, we wouldn't even weigh him until he was five days in. So who knows? Like, Maybe could be a couple pounds in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We've talked about that. We even talked about that with the gentleman yesterday at the taco stand, just how the food here in Mexico is just, for the most part, just cleaner. I just, you know, mm-hmm. everything back home in these states is just, you know, all steroid injected and chemical injected to make it bigger and this. And, mm-hmm. and the fruit here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't really eat fruit in uh-huh. Colorado. And I was just, I was like, oh, I just don't really like it. I don't like it. It turns out it's just not good over there. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I was always like, oh, I don't like apples I'm like, or pears. I was like, oh, like who eats <laughs> pears? Pears are so good here. Yeah. yeah. So oh sweet. my goodness, so uh-huh. sweet. It, just the fruit here is unbelievable. And the mango, they put a chamoy oh. on the top. Oh. I have a mango trees by so my good. house, so okay. I just get free mangoes. Yeah. There you go. So, <laughs> and like, there's just tons of them. Like, yeah, we, we passed by some mango tree, but nothing really. Oh, she saw them. Yeah. Falling, like, okay, I'm not a mango tree. Like, yeah, it's a little not ready yet. <laughs> Throw in They're some too rocks. Dark, but the birds are eating it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'll stand there for a few minutes and usually one will drop while I'm there and I'm like, you're perfect. Let's yeah, go. I've been waiting for you. Mm-hmm. So I have four mangoes right now that I'm going to turn into like popsicles, frozen popsicles. Oh, nice. So yeah, the food here, you're going to feel so much better. 
you I eat a lot less too now that I'm Notice here. That. Yeah, it's um, just hot. You don't, well, no, and it could be the heat. and I think the food less. I just feel like nourished. Like I feel like I I feel like sometimes before it was maybe like I would anxiety eat maybe. I, so it could be like different things. Oh, yeah, we've, but, but we've kind of noticed that too. We've talked about that. Uh-huh, we've seen yeah. a lot back in the states. We've been here and we eat less and we just feel fuller. Yeah. I mean, you feel like satisfied. Yeah. So, so yeah. maybe it's something more than we thought. Maybe. It was maybe we're just getting older, whatever. But <laughs> no. that's, hearing it from someone else, like that's exactly how we felt. We talked. Yeah. We used to be eat big eaters, and then we come here like eat, eat a couple of pieces. Even we'll go of this to a and, buffet. We also eat a little yeah. less. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we'd go crazy in the U.S. Here, yeah. Like, we also eat a lot of sweet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and then here, I don't ever feel guilty. Before, I feel like I was always kind of like trying to diet. I've lost thirty six pounds since I've moved here. Wow. wow. And I'm not really dieting. I mean, I do like like to go to the gym and yeah. things like that. But um, like, I still eat out maybe like three or four times a week. Now oh, that yeah. I'm not eating out as much, yeah. and, right? <laughs> so I'm like, I eat out like a lot. And um, and then, but when I cook at home, it's usually like I'm eating a lot more simple too. Like yeah. I'm like, oh, like I'll just have a burrito, but it'll be like beans and avocado and veggies oh, very good, right? yeah. And, yeah and like a little cheese well i don't eat that much cheese here but you know something simple like that and i'm like satisfied and i mm-hmm. don't think about food really yeah. um and then i never really ate bread in the u.s mm. and like today for breakfast i had well i had leftover like a little like a, a veggie stew that i had yesterday that i just had to be eaten and then after that i had like bread with um What's it called? Lechera, which is like that condensed milk. Oh, uh-huh. right. A little bit. And I feel like in the US, I would have been like, oh, like I can have that. That's so bad. And here, you don't even feel guilty about what you eat. Like you're uh, like, kind of be like, oh, well, I don't know if I should have that. I'm like, well, if you want it and like you feel like, like just have it. And he's like, we're, yeah, I feel like we're eating like so bad, but like I'm losing weight. And I'm like, that's because you're not eating that bad. Your yeah. your body is getting yeah. nutrition. And worst case, you're sweating out too. Yeah. <laughs> I think yes. another thing is the stress level. Once the stress yes. level getting lower, your body mm-hmm. also work better. Yeah. Also another reason you lose some weight. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, like you feel more satisfied just eating. Yeah. Like, Less stress. Yeah. Yeah. Good for your eating, eating habits mm-hmm. and yeah. everything. Immune system. Everything. Oh yeah. All the oh, and then if you go into the ocean too, like that's detoxing you. All that yeah, salt water is just getting stuff out of mm-hmm. your body. More oxygen. Um, raise up your metabolism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, yeah, I feel better a lot more like just physically since moving to Mexico and not like oh, yeah. in a certain place specifically, mm-hmm. but just in general, I feel like I have more energy um, in the U S sometimes I didn't want to get up and I had to, right. Cause I worked really long yeah. hours, uh, but it was always kind of like, Oh, I have to get up. Oh, I have to do this. <laughs> and here it's not that way. It's just kind of like, Oh, it's a new day. Like Let's what's go. next? What's going to happen today? Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing today? And every day is different. And even if it's not, it's like we only cut the same for one or two days. And uh, I think most people <clears throat> are just more, slow pace more relaxed mode even mm-hmm. even they might be just poor level or mi- middle mm-hmm. class whatever may, not much much money but Everything most just, people huh? enjoy life more yeah people work to live here yeah. yeah and in the u.s you live to work you're just like a cog in the machine you're just another employee right yeah. i always i had like an existential crisis a little bit when i moved here because um my whole life, I worked so hard to just be like a really good employee, and I just gotta wow. go, and I just gotta climb the ladder, and I have to, and I did. But then I get to these positions, and I was like, okay, well, like now I'm a director, now what? and like, and I was like, okay, well, like VP was the next thing, and then I was just like, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm scared for my life today, yeah. like, all these things. And I'm like, it's yeah. like I'm like as a single woman, why am I driving home at nine thirty at night from a work thing? I'm still like two hours away, and that was like happening, and oh, right. gosh. yeah, um, and you just think where I'm like. You were when people are like, well, don't you feel like unsafe? And I'm like, well, I used to feel unsafe then when I was having to drive on icy sure. roads or having to do, which of course isn't the case for everybody. But just in general, I feel like the safety level, I feel safer here, even though like in the US, there's so much propaganda right now, especially um, with about like, oh, Mexico so dangerous. I do have a theory about that. I think it's the lithium. They just found the lithium and it, they nationalized it instead of privatized it. So I do think you guys in the U.S. are going to be hearing a lot more about how dangerous it is and um, kind of blowing things a little more, like exaggerating things a lot more over there. 
Um, just like here, we hear like my family members here when they hear I'm going to the U.S. They're scared. They pray for me. Like- <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. they're. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna light a candle. Don't go to the store. Don't go to the malls. You're gonna get shot. You're gonna. You're. They're gonna kill you if you go. Don't go anywhere. Like don't leave the don't house. Do anything. Yeah. So then I go to the U.S. and they're like in Mexico. They're freaked out that you're gonna be in Mexico. Like this is gonna happen. And then when I go yeah. to the U.S., they're like. And in reality, the majority of people are good, or you know, sure. we all have good right. and bad, but. Um, you just have to be aware and be smart and like accidents can happen anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. I, I think, you know, maybe, you know, kind of like ending that, ending the little interview here, kind of, uh-huh. we would like to ask, you know, were there any other questions maybe we could have asked or any last piece of advice you'd like to give you know, anybody mm-hmm. out there, people who want to move to Mexico, just any good advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I mentioned earlier, Mexico is in line to be the 13th economic superpower of the world. It is no longer the American dream. It is now el sueño mexicano, so now the Mexican dream. So if you are, you know, in your 20s, 30s, or whatever age, and you want to make something of yourself, Mexico is the place. Uh, be respectful of the people, um, of the cultures, learn the language. Mexicans are super friendly and they will try to speak English to you. Uh, but you still have to put your part. I know people have lived here 20 years and don't speak a lick of Spanish. Wow. So learn the language. Don't be upset if they're upcharging you a little bit. You are in a way better financial position than they are, no matter where you feel you are in your financial position. So if you can't afford what they're saying, either go somewhere else or don't get it. <laughs> um, but definitely come here, especially if you're like first generation Mexican American, come back home, come back home and live the life that your parents thought you were going to live over there. Make that money, get your bag and come back. Perfect. Awesome. So we want to thank you for your time. I mean, it's been great. So much good advice, so much uh, very interesting stories. And we appreciate you coming out here and and sharing it with us. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Well, so again, thank you all for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, we will okay. we're, we were leave her um, TikTok, Instagram, and yes, please. websites we mentioned or so in the description so you can get connected. <laughs> all right, thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye.